what is up guys welcome back to another video in today's video we are going to be showing you guys how we built this diy electric skateboard mini cruiser i built this electric skateboard to commute around college and it's perfect for short rides it weighs in at under 15 pounds and is super portable yet it boasts some pretty high-tech specs it's got a top speed of around 28 miles an hour a range of around 10 miles and has 3000 watts of power in its single motor so now that you guys have gotten a sneak peek of the board let's get into how we built this thing For this build, I am going to be using the Torqueboard's 218mm extended trucks. These trucks are caliber clone style, which just refers to the shape of the hanger. It's in this D shape, which allows a lot of the common electric skateboard motor mounts to clamp to the hanger more easily. These trucks are extra wide, they're 218mm compared to the standard 184mm, which just gives you more space on the hanger for larger motors. I'm personally using these not for that extra hanger space, but because they also have extra extended axles, which will allow me to use a wheel pulley with a bearing in it as opposed to a bolt-on wheel pulley. For the wheels, I'm using the 85mm orange Kagawamas in the 80A durometer. These are a tried and proven electric skateboard wheel, which is nice and big to get you over lots of bumps, but it's also small for an e-skate wheel to remain lightweight on the board. The motor mount that I'm going to be using is a Boardnamics caliber style motor mount. This is a really common style of motor mount for these caliber style trucks. It's basically got two pieces that act like a clamp and then a plate that bolts onto that clamp that can be adjusted so you get the right clearance on your board and then the motor can be mounted to that plate. The first step is to mount the clamp to the hanger of the truck. We took the two pieces that act as the clamp and then the nuts and bolts that hold the clamp together and loosely fitted them to the truck. For now, we just wanted a loose fit of how the clamp is going to sit on the hanger because it's going to be adjusted as we figure out exactly where everything in the drivetrain fits. The wheel pulley that we are using is a 40 tooth Kegel wheel pulley from Boardnamics. It's made from stainless steel and CNC aluminum so it's super strong and super high quality. The wheel pulley has a Kegel pattern which matches up with the core of our wheel which is super important. This is a press fit style wheel pulley, which basically just means it has a bearing in it and it doesn't need a retaining ring on the outside to hold the pulley to the wheel. The issue with using these is that you need extended axles, which is exactly why I chose those trucks from the beginning. The bearings that we are using are the Zealous bearings and these ones have built in spacers, which I absolutely love because once they're on your wheels, you don't have to worry about fiddling to get them on your axles with that bearing spacer. So now with the motor clamp attached to the hanger, we did a little dry fit to see how everything's going to fit together. We slid on the motor plate, we inserted the wheel pulley into the Kegel core of our wheel, slid the wheel onto the axle, and just saw how everything was going to line up. This is going to allow us to determine the final position that that motor clamp should be at, such that the motor plate doesn't rub against the wheel pulley and that everything is nicely aligned. Once we determined what the optimal position for that motor clamp was, we loosened it, moved it down to the desired position on the hanger, and then retightened it this time using some blue Loctite to prevent the bolts from coming loose because this board is going to be undergoing a lot of vibrations. This time we fully tightened the clamps on the hanger as it's going to be in its final position. All that we needed was this adjustable wrench and a multi-hex tool allen key. When the clamp is fully tightened on the hanger, you'll be able to slide the plate over the hanger and the bolt holes will align up with those on the clamps automatically. If they don't line up, you'll have to tighten it a little bit more. At this point, we mocked up how the trucks are going to sit on the deck so that we could determine the angle at which the plate should be mounted such that it doesn't hit the deck when the trucks turn. We then used the long M4 cap head bolts and nuts to mount the plate to the motor mount on the truck. The motor that we are using for this build is a single 6355 190 kV motor from Maytech with a maximum power output rated for roughly 3000 watts. 
The shaft is 8mm in diameter and has a slot for a keyway. The connectors that came on the motors are 4mm bullet connectors for the phase wires, and then the JST connector is already automatically compatible with VESC sensor ports, which is nice because you don't need an adapter. With the plate mounted to the motor mount, we took this motor and mounted it to the plate using four M4 by 8 mm cap head bolts. We didn't fully tighten the motor to the motor plate, as the motor still needs to be adjusted once the pulleys are on to get the belt tension right. Speaking of the motor pulley, the motor pulley that we are using is a 15 tooth, 15 mm wide, 5M pitch motor pulley, which works with 8 mm motor shafts and keyways. To install the motor pulley on the motor, we first inserted the keyway into the shaft of the motor in that groove. We then slid the motor pulley onto the shaft of the motor, lining up the keyway with the groove in the motor pulley. With the motor pulley on the shaft of the motor, we inserted the grub screws into the threads on the side of the pulley, ensuring that we put Loctite on the screws so that they don't come loose. The belt that we are using is a 270mm long, 15mm wide, 5M pitch belt that we got from Polybelt. To install the belt on the drivetrain, simply slide it over the axle and the motor pulley. Then you can slide the wheel pulley and the wheel onto the axle and rotate the wheel pulley until the belt grips onto it. As you continue to rotate the wheel pulley, you can then slowly press the wheel and wheel pulley onto the axle farther until both pulleys and the belt align perfectly. The deck that I chose to use for this build was the Dropcat 33 Seeker from Land Yachts. I chose this deck for a couple reasons, primarily because I love this downhill shape, and secondly because it's also short while maintaining that shape. It's only 33 inches and this is going to be used as a campus commuter, so portability and ease of carrying is key in the design. As you can see from this shot, the deck's got some significant rocker, meaning that the middle of the deck sits lower than the ends. It's also got a moderate concave, and the deck is dropped through. The rocker combined with the drop through are going to make for an extremely low center of gravity while riding. All of these features combined made for a really enticing option for me on a campus commuter. This deck is made to be used with trucks that are drop through mounted, but I'm going to be top mounting them on this deck, so I'm going to be adding these top mount plates onto the board. I mounted these trucks to the deck just as you would with any other top mount board, except I added this metal plate on the top of the deck to ensure that the bolts wouldn't rip through the wood or cause any damage. I also added a quarter inch riser pad to improve the clearance of my motor mount on the deck and also to dampen the ride. The ESC that we are using is one of the old Nersh and Fockbox singles, which is one of our favorite single ESCs of all time. Unfortunately, it's not sold anymore, but there are a ton of other great single VESC based ESCs out there at the moment. We opted to use a custom made 12S1P P42A battery made by Eastgate Alex. We are intentionally going with such a small battery because we don't need a whole lot of range and we don't need a whole lot of power, and the purpose of this board is to just get us around and be as lightweight and portable as possible. The power switch that we are using is just the standard power switch that Flipsky offers. The new ones that they have are rated for up to 13S and 150 amps continuous. We are going to be utilizing a split enclosure setup on this build, so in the rear enclosure that's housing all of the electronics, I'm going to be using this 3D printed enclosure that I found on Thingiverse. For the front enclosure that's going to house the battery, I'm going to use this other enclosure that I mocked up in Fusion 360 with the dimensions of my battery that I also 3D printed. I also made this battery harness to connect the front enclosure to the rear enclosure as the two are separated by nearly 6 inches. On the side that plugs into the battery, I have also wired in the charge port in parallel. One problem that I pretty much immediately noticed after mocking up the enclosures on the deck was that they didn't sit flushly with the curvature of the deck. This was particularly apparent with the front enclosure, which I had completely miscalculated the curvature of the deck for. I added these three varying length strips of yoga mat to compensate for this issue, and it actually ended up working quite well. By no means does it look pretty, but until I actually 3D print another one of these, this is going to be my solution. With the enclosure sitting as flush to the deck as I could get it, and in the position that I wanted it to be in, I drilled six holes through the deck where the bolt holes will go. To secure the enclosure to the deck, I'm going to be using six of these M5 brass nut inserts. These are going to go through the top of the deck in those holes that I just drilled, and bolts will go through the bottom of the enclosure and thread into these inserts so that the enclosure is held to the deck. 
I used a drill and hex bit to drive these into the deck so that they sit flushly with the grip tape. I repeated a pretty much identical process for the rear enclosure, except the rear enclosure was already pretty close to the shape of the deck so I didn't need to add as many foam layers. Moving to the inside of the enclosure, the first thing that I did was to install the charge port on this pre-made hole that I had on the front battery enclosure. It slides through one end and then there's a retaining nut on the other side that locks it into place. The battery is mounted to the inside of the enclosure using this velcro that I picked up from a local hardware store. It sits in this slot in the enclosure. We then connected the battery harness up to the XT60 that comes out of the battery and also the small 2-pin JST to the charge port. The wire with the sleeving then gets routed out that semicircular cutout on the end of the enclosure. With the front enclosure done, I mounted it to the deck using 6 M5 by 20 mm bolts. I first added the layered foam pieces over the bolts so that they would already be pre-aligned when I flipped the enclosure over and then I bolted in the bolts to the threads already in the deck. With the front enclosure done, we started working on the rear enclosure, and the first thing that I did was to drill four holes, three for each of the phase wires, and then one for the sensor wire, so that they could pass through from the motor outside into the enclosure. On the side facing the inside of the deck, I then drilled a larger hole for the power switch. This enclosure didn't come with a channel already pre-cut for the wire that's going to pass between the front and the rear enclosure, so I just cut a slot in the foam pad underneath for the wire to go through. I then mounted the power switch in the hole that I drilled for it, and use the retaining nut on the other side to lock it into place. I then routed the three phase wires and the sensor wires through the hole on the end of the enclosure, and then connected the bullet connectors to the phase wires going into the ESC, and the sensor wire to the sensor port on the Fock box. I then connected the XT60 on the FlipSky power switch labeled out to the Fock box, I connected the three pin going from the physical switch to the switch, and then I connected the XT60 with the inside to the battery harness. To test that everything was wired properly, I turned the power switch on and it glowed blue and the ESC turned on. It then became a mad scramble to fit everything inside this minuscule enclosure, so I just fiddled around with it a bunch until everything fit in a reasonable manner, and then I programmed the VESC using VESC Tool 3.0. I'm not going to be showing you guys how I program this specific board in this video, but if you guys are interested, there's a ton of other really great programming videos out there on YouTube. The remote that I am using for this build is the Build Kit Board's Voyager Remote Controller. This remote is loaded with a ton of really cool features and has channel hopping, meaning that I'm sure to never be disconnected from my board. For a full detailed review of the Voyager remote controller, click the link in the top right corner here. To connect the Voyager receiver up to the ESC, we just connected the JST into the receiver and then plugged the other adapter into the UART port on our Fock box. To mount the receiver in the enclosure and hold it in place, I just used some Velcro. At this point, we were able to bench test the board to make sure everything was working properly. With everything working well, I then mounted the rear enclosure to the deck using the threaded nut inserts that we installed earlier and some M5 cap head bolts and washers. And just like that, the board was done, and this is what the finished project looked like. Overall, from a functionality standpoint, I'm super pleased with how this board came out. It's not the cleanest build we've ever done. It's a mono drive on this ridiculously long extended truck, which makes it look a little bit awkward. There's the wire going between the two enclosures, which isn't as neat as I would have liked it to be. 
and of course the front enclosure doesn't really sit flush with the deck, and those yoga mats do detract from the look of the board. For around 8 months, I rode this board every single day for several miles and had no issues. However, right around the 8 month mark, the front enclosure did start to crack due to the stresses that built up from this enclosure not being flush with the deck. I ended up redesigning the front enclosure and 3D printing it again, this time compensating for the contour of the deck. And the second iteration of the front enclosure is so much better, and this time actually sits flushly with the bottom of the Dropcat Seeker deck, and I couldn't be more pleased with the result. It's much stronger because there's no stress from the enclosure trying to bend and conform to the shape of the deck, it also just looks a ton better. So there you guys have it, that is how I built this DIY electric skateboard cruiser that I use for getting around my college campus. So just to recap the specs on this board, the top speed is around 28 miles an hour which is plenty for a board like this. I usually top out around 15 to 17 miles an hour just because I keep the truck super loose and I want the board to remain nice and nimble. Also going faster than that on a college campus is completely unreasonable, so around 15 is the fastest I'd ever need to go and the speed's just there if I'm riding it for fun. The range on this board is around 10 miles, which is plenty. I wanted to keep the board nice and light, which is why I chose a smaller battery, and just having at least 5 miles, enough to get me to class and back was all that I wanted. The hill climbing ability on this board is definitely not its forte. It's not terrible, but it's not great either. The board uses a motor which has a maximum rating of 3000 watts, which is actually quite powerful. However, it uses a small battery, meaning that the maximum power is capped at right around 2000 watts. Additionally, because this board is a mono drive, the traction is very limited when hill climbing. The same thing applies for acceleration and braking, which aren't as strong as it would be if the board had two motors. The acceleration and braking are still great, however the fact that this board is a mono drive definitely influences the way it feels when it rides. The best feature of this board in my opinion is its portability. It weighs in at only 15 pounds, making it super lightweight and easy to carry. This was particularly important for me as I was going to be carrying this board into my classes and all around campus when I wasn't using it. The length of the deck is also short enough so that it's easy to carry it by your side without having to bend your arm too much. That's it for this video, if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns let us know in the comments section below and we will make sure to get back to you. There will be a full parts list in the description below as well if you're interested in building a similar board to this. If you guys enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel for lots of other DIY electric skateboard and DIY electric vehicle content. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and we will see you guys in the next one.